all about perfectionism. Let's dive in, shall we? So, all about perfectionism. Perfectionism occurs on a spectrum, okay? So we have this spectrum of normal to neurotic perfectionism, okay? So normal to neurotic, and the other side of neurotic would be just not caring at all, not, you know, no, <laughs> no cares at all, uh, zero Fs, whatever, okay? And so it can be maladaptive when it is in that extreme perfectionist zone or realm, or it can be adaptive when it's in the normal, healthy range. And we're going to talk about the normal, healthy range attributes of perfectionism and the excessive or um, neurotic or maladaptive or unhealthy realm of perfectionism, okay? And we're also going to dive into uh, and a perspective that can help you shift from that neurotic realm back towards the ner normal realm of perfectionism, okay? And can help reduce its damaging grip on you. If that's some, if this is something that's an issue for you, and it has been an issue for me in the past, for sure, this is why I'm talking about it, it's why I know about it, uh, then this, this perspective I'm gonna share with you in a little bit can really help, and I'll also give you an invitation for a practice, to join me in a practice later today as well that helps balance the scale or the pendulum swing. So let's talk about the normal realm of perfectionism. So normal perfectionist or perfectionism is being conscientious. It's having an appropriate attention to detail and the ability to forgive mistakes. That's normal like a high achieving high achiever mindset would be the normal realm of perfectionism so high achievers strive for excellence and they learn from mistakes they're forgiving of mistakes they have high standards in that normal realm of perfectionism high achievers have high standards right and high integrity are good at keeping their word to themselves and others, and are unconditionally accepting, forgiving, and loving of themselves and others. And this is a healthy realm of perfectionism or um, being a high achiever. It is co-creative and balanced. It's strong and flexible, so able to bend or adapt or shift with changes with feedback from the environment perfectly imperfect okay and I love that phrase perfectly imperfect and it guides me into this I want to share the perspective that can help you shift in back towards that normal realm of perfectionism okay and that is the concept of wabi-sabi Wabi-sabi is a Japanese phrase or word that, if I'm translating it correctly, uh, is basically seeing the beauty in imperfections and recognizing that the natural world has a lot of quote-unquote imperfections in it. And in Japanese architecture, a lot of times they'll actually intentionally include imperfection in the design, in the visual facade of a building. They'll intentionally include some wabi-sabi, some offset in the bricks, some element that maybe isn't aligned perfectly or exactly square, okay? And so it relates to that concept of our awareness, that perspective that in the natural world, there are quote unquote imperfections and that we can find. And if you, if you look at anything, 
you can always find a flaw or an imperfection, right? Or a way that it could be better, a way that it could be improved. And depending on who's doing the looking and what they're looking with and through, what beliefs or values or experiences or trauma or unprocessed emotions, this or that, you show the same thing to five different people and you'll probably have five different opinions as to how it could be improved or what flaws are there or maybe one person doesn't see any flaws at all okay so everyone is looking through different lenses through different beliefs experiences and everything and so what could be seen as imperfect from one person's perspective may be perfect and whole and complete from another's, okay? So it's, it's kind of subjective in a lot of ways. So I love the concept of wabi-sabi for helping us understand that we are looking you know, from our own viewpoint and opening up to include other views as well as the natural beauty that imperfections um, have. So let's talk about the unhealthy realm of perfectionism, the maladaptive trait of being overly perfectionistic. And it is where we tend to get hypercritical of ourselves or others, judgment, um, unforgiving of mistakes may tend to be too hard on yourself or others if a mistake is made. Often is approval oriented. So doing things or creating a particular thing to receive approval or accolades. And it's very much founded on a comparison mindset, a competitive comparison mindset that is basically looking to be better than another, okay? And in an unhealthy sort of way, I mean, we can compare, contrast in healthy ways, right? But when perfectionism is in that maladaptive, um, unhealthy, neurotic realm, it is very damaging to the self and to others. And as well, perfectionist in the neurotic, maladaptive, unhealthy realm may have difficulty delegating tasks to others because there is a, um, a lot of need for controlling outcomes and may have a lot of difficulty asking for help, okay? So driven by need for control of the outcome or the process, need to be right, need to be in control. And it's frequently accompanied by anxiety, depression, stress. Uh, it can be lead to behavior known as procrastination or not even starting things because there's a concern that you won't be able to get it right. So not starting things, putting off finishing things, um, keeping on, uh, you know, tending to things, changing things, shifting things, trying to get it perfect just right before you, you know, launch something or publish your book or whatever it is. Um, all or nothing thinking oftentimes goes along with perfectionism, neurotic perfectionism. Uh, sometimes OCD behaviors as well, eating disorders, and even the realm of suicidal thoughts or thinking because there's this not good enough or unworthiness or need for approval from the outside in that goes hand in hand with that maladaptive perfectionism. And social media has really done a lot to... <laughs> make that maladaptive perfectionist tendency worse. You know, our children are growing up with comparing themselves to fake pictures of others, <laughs> fake realities that are being presented as true in that people don't always show their true colors or, or aren't comfortable being vulnerable because they don't want to be seen as weak.
Okay, so coming back to balance on that spectrum of maladaptive, unhealthy, comparison mindset, comparison is the thief of joy, um, perfectionism versus not giving a <laughs> an F, <laughs> not caring at all, you know, coming to the center with that where you're able to have high standards, be in integrity, be forgiving and loving and accepting with yourself and others and the process, okay? And a huge thing for me that's really helped me is the practice of yoga. Yoga gets you in tune with the now, with what is, with whatever is going on in your body, mind, spirit. It is really good at holding that mirror up to you and allowing you to look in the mirror and have the practice reflect back to you what's been going on, what sort of choices or residue you have from choices you've made, what sort of tension are you holding in the body, is it mainly on the right side because you tend to, when you focus or concentrate or sit too long, you tend to cross your right leg over your left and sit, you know, in a bit of a slouch twist. You know, we have these unconscious ways that we sit, we have all kinds of stuff we've been through, right? And all kinds of things that we're dealing with. Everybody is dealing with so much, especially after the last year, that pause, pushing that pause button and taking time to connect to yourself and establish that ability to be unconditionally accepting, unconditionally forgiving, unconditioning unconditionally loving with yourself allows you to do that with others gives you permission to you know make mistakes or not do a pose perfectly and so my invitation for you is to hop into a yoga class get going with your yoga practice if it's fallen by the wayside or maybe you've been trying to establish a home practice schedule some one-on-ones with me i work with helping people all the time getting their home practice back on track but i also have a weekly yoga class on zoom called yin yoga magic now yin yoga is a great way to practice surrendering because a lot of times we're not willing to surrender something when we're getting into that realm of unhealthy perfectionism or maladaptive perfectionism. We're not willing to surrender that control. And yin yoga is a wonderful way to surrender that. So every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. to 3.45, so it's only a 45-minute class, but it's very profound in that we are in a pose for anywhere from two to five minutes at a time. And it's all done on the floor. You're not standing up for yin yoga. So it's all done on the floor. You don't need any special props. You just get a couple large bath towels, a hand towel, a washcloth, a blanket, and a pillow. Everybody has that laying around. Grab those, get on the floor with me, and we drop into these poses for that length of time to unwind that more deeply held tension and to watch and witness how we interface with sensation, how we interface with ourselves, how we meet that need to achieve the full five minutes of the pose. Do we force ourselves through it and go into that realm of intensity called P-A-I-N, or are we willing to stop at three minutes in and let forgo that last two minutes and just rest? and let it go for the day. So that's where yin yoga is really beautiful for expanding our ability to be perfectly imperfect, to be in that wabi-sabi state where we're embracing our imperfections, our flaws, our you know recurring tension we have in the physical body or mind or spirit as acceptable and even grow to love it. So 
If you are interested in joining that yoga class, I invite you to sign up through my new website, my new All About Woo website, All About Woo website, that's hard to say. <laughs> and if you do that, you can use a code that gives you uh, three bucks off the class. So it's $10 class. Let me copy and paste this into the comments. Hello guys, tuning into the comments here. So if you want to hop into that yoga class, so I have a way you can sign in right through Facebook too, but that's gonna be $9.99. So you can do it that way on the All About Woo page, but um, I suggest that you do it this other way here, going through the allaboutwoo.com website. And for those of you who want to be in the tribe on the website, and become a monthly member, you can get these weekly yoga classes for free as well. The monthly membership is $33 a month and it gives you free access to the weekly yoga class. So there's that, it's called Next Level Woo Membership. Tool around on my website, it's really fun and amazing what's on there. And then we have the Yin Yoga Magic Yoga class that you can sign up for. I just put the link in the comments and the code to get you $3 off is today's date 05 12 2021 so 05 for may 12 for the date and 2021 for the year no spaces in there all together that'll give you three dollars off if you want to join me and you'll be emailed the zoom link to hop into that yoga class today that is what i have for you my friends i would love to hear where you're at with your on the spectrum of perfectionism and what tools you found that work. I love, again, I love yoga for that practice of being unconditionally present with ourselves, with whatever is going on and forgiving ourselves and really loving ourselves so that we are able to emanate that and give that unconditional love and forgiveness and acceptance to others. So, that is what I have for you today. Thanks guys for being here live with me, Kelly, Paul, my mom's probably on here too. And Paul, I'm gonna to respond to your comment in the uh, comment thread here after this live stream ends. Thank you so much for being here. Much love to you all and hope to see some of you at the Yin Yoga Magic this afternoon, 3 p.m. Central Time. Namaste y'all.